president of the National Baptist Convention, Lehman's Department. Yes, sir. Just talking to him, I think from the last convention, there were over 6,000 men that registered to be a part of the Lehman's Department of the National Baptist Convention. He is somebody's speaker. And when I discovered that he was going to be in Chicago, I said, well, can you just extend that flight just a little longer and then stop on over to Progressive Baptist Church? And he comes to us from Kansas City, uh, Missouri. All right, so I'm going to put you on the Missouri side. Uh, but again, we are grateful for him to be here. And let's show him some love as he comes.
let me give you some context of this scripture, uh, just some understand foundational context. It begins in Matthew 16, 13. It says, Jesus uh, comes into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, him and his disciples. And Jesus asks the question, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And his disciples began to answer. They said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, some Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But then Jesus turns around and he asks them, whom say ye that I am? And of course, Simon Peter, he spoke up. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Yeah. Jesus said, blessed are thou, Simon of Jonah, uh, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it to you, but my Father which is in heaven. Yeah. And then Jesus says, upon this rock, yeah. upon your proclamation, yes, upon what you just said about me, I'm going to build my church. Yeah. That's where we are today. To build, Jesus said, my church. We're in the church of Christ right now. The church is to uh, win people to Christ, build people up in Christ, and send people out for Christ. His church, his ecclesia, his called out ones, are to, are to be the church and to do his bidding, his will, his doing. Jesus also gives us an understanding of who's going to come into the church. Look what he said. He says, him and his disciples came uh, into the coast of Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea. Some say Caesarea, but it's Caesarea. Uh, named after Caesar. The Roman emperor. Rome is occupying the land. Uh, Philippi. Named after Philip of Macedon, the father of Alexander the Great. Uh, the Greeks did occupy the land. And the land is owned, the land is owned by the Jews. Here you have these different cultures. And in the crossroads, in the midst of the crossroads of culture, Jesus asked the question, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? He's telling us that what's going to be coming into the church is going to be different cultures, different thinking, different kinds of mindsets. Uh, in fact, you can see that today. There's all kinds of cultures coming to our church today, Asian cultures, man. And you got a European and all of the different cultures coming into the church. You got a whole lot of different mindsets coming into the church. Our children are in the church. Uh, the men, the disciples of Christ, the women should be teaching our children. They're coming into the church. What do they see when they come into the church? I'm reminded that Paul had told us in 2 Timothy 3.16, he mentions the word, a phrase. I'm just going to use the one part of that. He talks about instructions in righteousness. Uh, the Greek word padea dakasene is a, is a word that's an educational phrase. Uh, he said that we're going to be instructed in righteousness. It's an educational term, the Greeks and the Romans at that day and time. The father was in charge of the education. Uh, and at the age of five, the father would turn the children over to a pedagogue, uh, an instructor, a teacher that's certified from the state. And the purpose was to teach the children how to be good citizens for the good of the culture. We teach them reading, writing, and arithmetic. And we teach them the laws of the land. How do we do it today? When our children become five, we give them to teachers that are certified to teach them reading, and writing, and arithmetic. But they also teach them the laws of the land. And they teach them some social virtues. Paul said, that when they come into the church, we need to teach them some biblical virtue. Yeah. Well, let's move a little closer to that. Paul was concerned that they were going to teach them the laws of the land, social virtues. In other words, when same-sex marriage becomes virtuous, they're going to teach that to our children. When shacking is all right, when, 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 when babies got to wear like it's okay, they're going to come into our children. And when they come into the church, and there's no biblical teaching. And all we have is entertainment and happiness. Uh, our children, when they grow up and take our places, they're not only going to change the doctrine of the church, they're going to change the church identity itself. Right, Hope Neva says, if there is no power and grace in the Christian church to bring down every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, the church becomes not merely useless, but dangerous. We got some dangerous churches. But let anything come in, anything talk. Nobody saying nothing, no man standing up. We're allowing these cultures to 
come into our church. Uh, we were allowing hip hop to come in, which is a subculture. Any kind of music, any kind of dancing, anything going on. I'm glad you all don't have that problem. But I'm telling you, if it's out there and you don't say something about it, it's going to come here sooner or later. It kind of reminds me of Duck Baptist Church. You remember, you remember Duck Baptist Church, don't you? Sunday morning, Duck Baptist Church gets prepared for church. And, 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 and the people come in, all of the ducks come in. And, and then the duck choir marches down the aisle. Singing, we watch them to Zion, and the duck choir takes its place. Then the duck deacons come on. The duck deacons start doing devotions, and, and things are high. They're singing songs of Zion. And the, the, the ducks give an offering like we do on Sunday morning. And, 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 and then the duck praise team comes on. All things are high this morning. Pastor Duck comes on, and Pastor Duck preaches a three point sermon. He says, We got to go back to basics. We got to get back to the foundation, the basics. Pastor Duck preaches, number one, we ducks. We're not chickens, we're not geese, we're not hawks, we, 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 we ducks. And he preaches the anatomy of a duck. Part two, he says, we have wings. Oh, Pastor Duck was on it, Reverend. He was, he was preaching this morning, talking about wings. He said, the third point is we can fly, ducks can fly. It got so good, he cooped a little bit and ducks began to fly all over the sanctuary. Crying and having a ball. Pastor Duck really preached that Sunday morning. They said, Pastor Duck, you really preach. You preach with ducks. You preach we had wings. You preach we could fly. Oh, you preached this morning. And then all the ducks walked home. <laughs> How often do we look on TV and see the preaching and all of the jumping and running? There's an emotional appeal, but no prophetic content. And our brothers and sisters will leave church emotionally powerless. Where is the teaching? Where are the men? Where are the ones that are supposed to be teaching and preaching and leading according to God's doctrine? We need some men in church. Uh, Paul gave us some indication what we're going to be looking for. But then he began to tell them how he's going to have to go to Jerusalem and suffer and die and be raised the third day. Peter, Peter called him aside and said, Lord, that's not for you. Are you the Messiah? You're the one that's going to take over this thing. And when you take it over, we're going to do to them what they've been doing to us. Jesus called him aside and said, no, 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 you got this thing wrong. Get thee behind me, Satan. For thou desirest not the things of God, but those of me. Then he calls them all together. And he gives them this little formula for discipleship. He says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. What does it mean to deny yourself? Uh, that Greek word, aponeome, it says that you will die to some stuff. You lived in the world, but now you've taken on Jesus as your Savior. Now you don't do some things you used to do. You don't have the same mindset. He says there's a difference in membership and discipleship. He said membership, membership has its privileges. When you're a member, you can, you can sit in your favorite seat. You can ride on the church bus, you can eat when the church cooks. If you're a member, you can be chairman of the willing workers, you can be deacon, chairman, trustee, uh, because you're a member. Uh, if, you, if, if you're a member, you can call the pastor whatever you need, because you're a member. Membership has its privileges. And you know the best thing about this? You can get all this for a dollar. But discipleship is different. Discipleship does not just give the tent. The discipleship will give more. Discipleship is not about me. It's always about Christ. Discipleship says my soul will never be satisfied until Jesus is glorified. It talks about not me anymore. Augustine said I always dealt with people by looking at them. He said I never did see myself when I dealt with them. I could see they sin. I dealt with people. I always put myself behind myself when I dealt with people. He said, but one day I met Jesus for myself. Jesus took myself from behind myself and placed myself in front of myself and I saw myself and was horrified. When we started looking at ourselves in relationship to people, how can I not serve people? How can I not be part of what Jesus has for me to do? He said, deny yourself. He said, 
says, take up your cross. You know, I travel a lot. I, I was gone 34 weekends last year, working and teaching with me, and I've even did some revivals and church anniversary pastor. Can you imagine? Even I was shocked. I've been called to pastor by everybody but Jesus. Right. He told me, stay in your place. Don't need no food. Right? Just keep your ministry. I don't know why the Lord gave me one gift and gave Brother Woods 10 gifts. I don't know. But what I do know, together we got 11 gifts for Jesus. And I'm going to wear my one gift out. As I walk before around the country, and I go into churches, I see men and women working, devotion, Sunday school teachers, yes. choir members, ushers, they working. But I notice they don't have a cross. Men and women in church. No cross. I realize that uh, the people in the community uh, that don't know Jesus are living under the shadow of the cross, which is in the church. But as we go out in the community, I notice there's no shadow. Yeah. My question is, who took the cross yeah. out of the church? Yeah. How come the church is filled with crossless men and women? Paul gave me some insight in 2 Corinthians 11, 3 and 4. As I paraphrase, Paul says, I am afraid that the same snake that you feed in the garden is tricking the church today with his school talking. He said we're worshiping a Jesus that's different. Has a different message. Different spirit. Paul said we're worshiping a Jesus that's never been to Calvary. Has been to Calvary. We're worshiping a Jesus that's never been to Calvary. He's been to Hollywood. It's a different Jesus than some of these churches today. It's a different Jesus. Uh, the Jesus from the church today uh, wants to make people happy. The Jesus from the church today has a spirit to make you emotional. The Jesus from the church today, I'm glad you all don't have this problem, uh, but if you know about it, you can help other churches. He has a message said to worship me for what you think I can do for you. The different Jesus. The Jesus, the Jesus from the church today has a spirit to make you happy. But the Jesus from Calvary has a spirit to make you holy. The Jesus from the church today has a message to worship me for what you think I can do. But the Jesus from Calvary says you worship me for who I am. Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro got it right. But they said, we know what our God can do. But even if he does not deliver us, we still not going to serve your God. We're going to stand on the God we know. The Jesus from the church today wants to make bad people good. But the Jesus from Calvary wants to make bad people live. Got men and women not picking up their cross. What is your cross? How do we begin to worship the authentic Jesus from Calvary? What is your cross? What has Christ called you to do? Yes. Not to do because, to get the title, uh -huh. but to do because of who I am. You see, I am who I am, not because of what I do. Yes. I do what I do because of who I am. Yes. What has he called you to do? Yes. Everybody has a cross. Yes. What is your cross? Oh, everybody's been through some stuff. Everybody in here looking good today, but you've been through some stuff. Yeah. Aren't you glad this morning you don't look like what you've been through? Yeah. But you've been through some stuff. You were prepared for your cross. You had a cross that you were prepared for. I don't know how he prepared you. He prepares everybody differently. He raised Moses in a palace to use him in the desert. He raised Joseph in the desert to use him in the palace. I don't know what you've been through, but everybody prepared different. Look what happened to Joseph. Joseph hated by his brother, so they put him in a pit. If they wouldn't have put him in a pit, he wouldn't have sold him to the traveling Israelites. If he'd never been sold to the traveling Israelites, he wouldn't have got down in Egypt. If he never got down in Egypt, he wouldn't have been sold on the auction block. 
If he never been sold on the auction block, he would not have been bought by Pop. If he never been bought by Pop, he could not have worked for Pop. If he didn't work for Pop, but Pop could not have put him over the whole household of Pop. If Pop would not have put him over the whole household of Pop, he wouldn't have been falsely accused by Mrs. Pop. If he never been falsely accused by Mrs. Pop, he wouldn't have went to prison. If he wouldn't went to prison, he wouldn't have met the butter and the baker. If he never remembered the butter and the baker, the butter would not have remembered him and stood in front of the paper. If the butter would not have remembered him and recommended him to the he could not have stood in front of the paper. If he never stood in front of the paper, he could not have interpreted his dream. If he never interpreted his dream, he never would have been second in command of all of Egypt. According to mankind, he was on his way down. But according to Jesus' preparation, he was on his way up. Somebody in here been through some stuff. I don't know what you've been through in your life. But somebody been through some stuff. Somebody in here been in drugs and alcohol. But what the devil meant for your destruction, God turned it around and gave you a ministry. Somebody in here took the pay the bills. I almost lost the house. What the devil meant for your destruction, God turned it around. Some woman in here been left by some no good nipple with the key. Look at the children now. Look what he did for you. You've been through some stuff. Jesus said I brought you through some stuff so that you can go back to somebody else going through life experience. Don't you hear him say you take up your cross. Don't forget where you came from. Remember what he did for you. Get in somebody's life. Jesus said you follow me. He showed us when you came from cross how to handle Calvary. He said follow how to handle Calvary. Oh, Jesus left his throne. Come down through 42 generations. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Made the blind to see. Oh, he did nothing but good. But one day, one day, they took him to Calvary's cross. They put him on an old rugged cross. They put some nails in his hand. Nails in his feet. Crown of thorns on his head. Oh, but they messed up. I heard him say, I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And when they lifted up my Jesus, all oh, my soul lifted up. He died. He died. He died on Calvary's cross. I heard him say, it's finished. He didn't say, I'm finished. He said, the work is finished. I'm just getting started. He died. He died. They put him in a bar or two. They should have known something was wrong with this. Anything wrong with you got to give it back. They in the grave all night front. All day Saturday. All night Saturday night. But early, early, on Sunday morning, he got up. All power in his hand. Do you know him today? Will you follow him today? Let me give you some good news. When you stand for Jesus,
Deacon Harold Simmons. Amen. 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 He speaks all across our great nation.